Hey guys, welcome to a new video. And the dark season is upon us. And of course, we try to fight it off with lots of lights. For quite a few years now, I've made controllers to run those lights. But today, today is a day unlike others before it. Yes, I am introducing a new product again, but this time it isn't an LED controller, but the actual LEDs themselves. The first custom Quinn LED addressable LED strip is here. But why you ask? Well, let's get into that. In a previous version of the script, I had a whole section about the history of LEDs, amounts of LEDs per meter, how voltages have changed uh, and gone up uh, in the last few years, and how Cobb LED strips are the new thing in recent years. Instead of boring you with that, let's get straight to it. Introducing to you the Quinn LED Dig Cobb 896160. A whole mouthful to say the following. This is the brightest Cobb LED strip with most zones available anywhere. Even better, it's 24 volt and RGBW and there is a waterproof version to round it off. This custom designed strip has 896 LEDs a meter, or rather diodes a meter, but we'll get into that later, in 3.125 centimeter addressable zones with 32 zones per meter, or for a five meter, 16 feet strip, 160 zones in total. A big upgrade versus the addressable neon strip I showed off about two years ago now in a video. If I think back, to when I started with addressable LED strips, it was five volt and 30 LEDs per meter. And we are basically on par now in regards to the amount of zones, but running at 24 volt RGBW and providing much, much more light. On top of that, I think it also looks better because of the Cobb method of building a strip with each zone consisting of lots of LEDs giving a much nicer and blended look versus a single package. And when I say the brightest strip, I mean it. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> With Cobb LED strips, the amount of power is for the most part determined by the amount of ICs on the strip. Each IC has a set power limit it will provide to the LED diodes. So a strip with 100 ICs or a strip with 160 ICs, if those are the same ICs, that means the strip will automatically use 1.6 times the amount of power, but with that, thus also provide an equivalent upgrade in brightness. This cob type strip also works great in fairly shallow depth aluminium diffusers. While the strip itself is already fairly diffused, adding a diffuser on top makes the effect even more pronounced and everything blends together like it's a continuous neon colored strip. Okay, you know me, let's dive into the pure technical aspects of this strip real quick. As I mentioned, it's a 24 volt RGBW strip with 896 LEDs per meter, or rather diodes per meter. It has 3.125 centimeter wide zones, so that's really small, for 32 zones per meter or 160 zones per five or 16, five meters or 16 feet. Each zone consists of seven diodes for each color. So red, green, blue, and white. This means the 24 volt is dropped over those seven diodes to make it a workable voltage for the individual diodes for that color inside of each zone. This is all connected to the outside world with beefed up 20 gauge cables connected to a bit more robust JST connector. You'll see later in the video why. This is either the normal JST SM variant you are used to using, or the JST JWPF waterproof version for the waterproof version of the strip. Did, did I mention already there is a waterproof version of this available? Yes, yes there is. I will be selling this strip in its normal IP20 bear variant, or encased in a molded silicone sleeve with an official IP65 rating. Now, this isn't the type of loose silicone sleeve you might have seen before, 
This is done in the factory, actually extruding the material around the strip, giving a much better fit. Now, this is not IP67, which means the strip isn't rated to be submerged, but it should be perfectly fine to be outside, even with some rain on it, etc. And it actually comes with waterproof connectors. I never understood why other manufacturers sell a waterproofed encased strip, but then have normal non-waterproof JST connectors on it. So yeah, I, I did it differently. All the other specifications for the non-waterproof and waterproof version are the same, so the same 160 zones, etc. And each includes a little pigtail cable with which you can wire it to your controller. Speaking of controllers, real quick, the strip is fully compatible with the Dig Uno, Dig Quad, or Dig Octa. It's up to you to pick whichever you'd like to use. Back to the specifications. For those easily bothered by flickering, this strip has a PWM frequency of around 4 kHz. Yes, it's a WS2814 based strip, but also yes, it's 4 kHz and not 2 kHz. There are multiple versions of the WS2814 available, if you know where to find them, and I used the highest PWM version that they had. Now, power is where things get interesting. To do your calculations, please use the real-world power sheets which have already been updated. If you don't know how, follow my power injection guide and I will explain to you how to calculate it yourself perfectly. Right, so this strip, when properly injected, will use up to 70 watt for any of the colored diodes, so red, green, blue, and dedicated white. Even though we're running 24 volts, that's almost three amps for just a five meter strip. The same also holds true for the 100% rainbow effect. That also uses 70 watts of power. Maybe you can now see why I said this is the brightest addressable strip out there. Those numbers rival decent powered analog LED strips. Funnily enough, this is also one of the first strips to break my own 4 amp limit per edge injection number. Because of the heavier copper used in this strip and the construction, this number should be raised to about 5 to 5.5 five amps per edge injection max. Another thing that's come a long way over the years is white color accuracy for addressable LED strip. Since I had control over the creation of this strip, I've tried to tune them as close to 3000 Kelvin warm white as I could, together with a good CRI of 94. It's more of a CRI 90 than 95 though, since R9 is somewhere around 68. That's a good value, but not perfect like we can get on some premium analog strips. Still, for anything except critical photo or video lighting, I'd say that's very nice. And this white light quality combined with the amount of power available makes this one of the first digitally addressable strips I can recommend to be used in some primary lighting tasks. Something addressable LED strips wasn't really suitable for before. And well, I think that's it. This is now the highest resolution, so the most zones, and brightest addressable cop strip out there, while also being RGBW instead of just RGB, so it really upgrades cop strips to a new level. Actually, now that I think about it, it is the highest resolution 24, stri 24 volt strip, period, cob or not. But wait, does it have no downsides then? Well, yes, there are two I can think of. First, it might actually be too bright for some installs. Yes, you can of course dim it down, but that also limits the amount of steps available since it still uses an 8-bit IC. What does that mean? In short, if you use up to full brightness, each color, so red, green, and blue, will have 255 steps. We also have white, but anyway, uh, of brightness available. If you now limit power to 50%, that means there are only 128 steps available. That's still not bad and will look great, but if you go one step further and dim it down to say 25% of its rated power, now only 64 steps for each color are left and fades and animations will start to look a bit more choppy. Next to that, kind of linked together, when running these high power levels, this strip will require cooling or it might run too hot and overheat. So mounting it into an aluminium profile is required if you want the strip to last. It kind of depends what you're doing. If you're just running 
you know, effects at uh, 30% or not LEDs are lit, not all LEDs are lit, etc. That's fine. But if you're going to run single colors or dedicated white at 100%, you kind of need the cooling for the strip to last. I see those things linked together, so I, I'll count that as one downside. <laughs> the second downside, as is with custom products, is the price. Next to it being a custom product for me, it also uses a lot of ICs, because each zone gets one, and each of those also cost a good amount of money. Those two factors combined makes this trip easily twice as expensive as some of the lower specification products out there. I can fully understand if that puts it out of the available price range for some projects. If this thing gains traction, hopefully we can do something about the price in the future, but we'll have to see. Currently, I already have a lot of money invested into producing what we currently have. So, yeah. Speaking of money, something that doesn't help is the sometimes high shipping costs. I also highlight highlighted that in my previous video. I'm fully aware of the issue, and I've tried really hard to find solutions for it. This product should have been the first one to move to one of those new solutions to lower costs. But sadly, we didn't make it in time for the launch of the strip. Hopefully, somewhere at the beginning of the new year, I will be able to present new options to buy the products, which maybe have cheaper shipping for you. We try to keep realistic options available also in the AllNet store, so please check it out. Good news is that they are also available from Dr. Z's at the time of this video releasing, so US buyers will be able to get them for decent rates. This isn't a cheap strip or product, and it should be considered a premium option, but I really felt that if it was technically possible, it should exist. I hope you can understand that, and there are some of you who feel the same way, and have projects which align with these specifications and the price point. And while I hope I was able to show you enough examples during this video, how this strip is different and another technological step forward. As for all my products, there is a dedicated page available for it on queenled.info, and that's where you can also find links to buy it. This product is again very exciting for me, and I love how the strip turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worships evil's might, beware my power, Green Lantern's light. Okay, bye. <laughs>